Hello my dear students welcome back to the lecture so here we'll see all the practical videos now you got an idea no so this is a, this is already already existing peer and the peer cap okay so this is a video what I have taken so it's only a two span bridge what we have and before that before the construction before this already the well foundation was done so you can see the peer cap here and through here all the well foundation and everything was done okay so you can see the bearing kept here this is one bearing bearing number two bearing number three similarly on the other side also the bearing has been kept and this is the arrangement which has been done to keep the girders So once that is done, they are arranging the girders now. So you can see on the left side, the bridge is already open. It's a already existing bridge what we have, which was constructed. And finally the shuttering for this has been done. So you can see the reinforcement for the beam also here right? I mean for the girder the reinforcement you can see and this is spacer bar what we have provided so this is a spacer bar okay one two all this is a spacer bar why the spacer bar will be provided when you are putting the reinforcement in two layers you are supposed to keep the spacer bar so that the second layer bar will be kept over that even in normal building beam construction also we do the same thing So you can see no, how it has been kept so this part is resting on the bearing part okay this part because finally the load will transfer in this way only isn't it the, lo the load will transfer to the girder and from there it will come here and from there it will be transferred to this particular abutment cap isn't it so that is why uh, we are providing the bearing here 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 so that is where the maximum uh, load and the stresses and even the uh, deflections and all those things will happen the shock and all will be in this part only right the vibrations and all okay you can see the cover block also which has been kept here and this is an existing one now we got an idea right so this is a uh, this thing a girder has been kept here and this is a mesh what they have prepared okay so this is a mesh we had seen a drawing a similar kind of mesh also they are placing it here This is for the existing one.
right now the flow of water is very less here okay yeah this video will come back later so this is nothing but a, a vehicular underpass what they have constructed okay in nearby area okay so uh, like uh, see the bridge is being constructed on the top isn't it if someone wants to go to the uh, lower lower area what they have to take is they have to take the nearby road they have to take they have to take this nearby road they'll come here and from here they'll go inside from here they'll go inside okay this is what they try to do and here also you can see lot of weep holes has been provided so from here we'll come outside okay the bridge is on this side so people will come outside from here okay and then they can uh, come to the top and from there they can uh, take the highway so i'm just showing you what exactly the how is exactly the road is being constructed road and also the how the bridge will be utilized for that okay so this is a main road what is going on if somebody wants to come to this place and all what they have done is they have given access from there so from there you'll uh, take a underpass and through underpass they can come here and then if they want to go to the main road and then again can, they can come to the main road they will come here and the access will be provided to the main road from here you can see this guy no see this is way So this is that road which is going downside. Okay. Yeah. So this is a slab what they have done. They put a, this is the underpass what we have. Okay. This is a top slab what we have put. And later once the back filling and everything is done, they are going to put a bitumen layer over that. Then of course you don't feel like what they have exactly done. Now we can get an idea how these things are practically done. Okay, so again, this is a crash barrier what we have constructed. So once the all the reinforcement has been arranged, now we can see these people are passing the end diaphragm. So this is called as diaphragm reinforcement. So they'll bring a bar and they'll pass it inside this. Okay, this is how the reinforcement will be passed. Okay, you got an idea how the reinforcement will be passed for the diaphragm wall the abutment diaphragm so this is how it has to be done okay this is the end portion what we have hmm? so in this way the bars will be placed the bottom is done similarly to the top bar also will be placed in this way okay so this is the diaphragm now okay end one intermediate and the last one you got an idea how these things will be put up practically on the side so the bottom will pass through this the top will come over that in this way the top is going to come so this is how it looks now
you can see this portion is at a higher level this portion is at a lower level isn't it so because of the super elevation that is how it has been done so once that is done finally we'll do the concreting of this so they have arranged the pump and all and through this the concreting will happen for the girders so to the transit mixer only we will order the concrete here and it will come and fall into this machine and then through this through the pump the concreting will be pumped and the placing of a concrete will happen so full concreting will not do okay the remaining half portion will be left so that we can arrange the deck slab in that so one girder is done now we are moving to the other girder similarly <coughs> yeah on the other side we are doing the concreting now so you can see how the concreting is being done Right. So you can see the, the how the concrete is in being done. Yeah, again you have to make use of needle vibrator and all. So half of this diaphragm portion, whatever we have, it will be casted along with this. Okay. Yeah. So almost done. The casting is also done. Okay. Great. So almost we have done the casting of this. So you can see the next day we have done the deshattering of it and the curing of this has been started. And next day again we'll start with this concreting. Okay. Yeah. This also is done. On the other side also we have done the casting, and this half portion is also done. You can see the casting of this portion also, and then this portion will be done. Similarly here also, uh, intermediate diaphragm that also. Half of the portion is concreted. Next, they are going to do this concreting. Okay. Yeah, and this concreting is also done. Finally, this concreting is also done, and this concreting is also done. Got it? So in this way, all the girders and the diaphragm wall we have done. So why this diaphragm wall will be constructed? In order to transfer the load. That's it. That is. Whenever the load comes, it will be transferred to the this girder, this girder, and this girder. So whatever load will come, I don't want all the load to be taken by this girder. So through this diaphragm, it will be transferred to this and also to this girder. So that is why this diaphragm, this will be done to transfer the load. Okay. So once that is done, these people are making the arrangement for the next activity, that is for the deck slab. Okay, you can see the deck slab, the centering has been arranged here in this way. So the proper alignment has to be done, and after that only we'll try to do this activity. And finally, this is how it looks. All the all the things has been done. Okay, this particular shape, whatever shape you wanted, the same shape has been brought here. And after that, we'll try to arrange the reinforcement. And then we are going to place the reinforcement. Okay, first shorter span we'll try to place it all the bar in this way. So you can see everywhere the bar has been placed horizontally, and even the vertical, and that is this kind of bar is also placed the distribution one in this way, in this way, this way, 
cover block is also placed here you can see the cover block placed here and then even the this thing that is a crash barrier this reinforcement is also inserted inside this this everything Okay, then this top uh, reinforcement will be provided in this way. Again, it will be mentioned. I already shown you in the drawing. Okay, uh, what is the diameter of a bar and all? The drawing you are supposed to see. It will be mentioned like A, B, C, D, E, F. What is that? So based on that, the reinforcement will be provided. So in this way, everywhere the reinforcement has been provided. So this is how your slab looks finally. So this is called as deck slab. This is a crash barrier reinforcement. So hope you are able to understand how the entire sequence of construction has happened here. Now you can see everywhere all the reinforcement, the top reinforcement has been put everywhere horizontally. Okay, and finally the concreting was done for this particular slab. So now you can see the slope also. The slope is something like this. After that we have to give this bracket so that is why these people are now again the curing will happen along with the curing this is already existing abutment we will take a reinforcement from there and then we will have to give a cap here okay that I mean not a cap that is a bracket should be given so you can see it here no whatever existing uh, debris and all are there we are clearing it off and then this kind of see this is a cap what we have created this is a cap this is a kind of a bracket what we have created okay so again the same shape will be there in the drawing now we are very familiar with this kind of uh, rebar okay we have seen that in uh, two other bridges also yeah and finally on this side also we are uh, constructing a wall here a kind of a wing wall is being constructed here or you can call it as a return wall also okay after all the reinforcement has been placed we'll do the shuttering to that and here also we'll do shuttering and on this portion also we'll do the shuttering This is on the other side, okay. On the other side, also we are supposed to do that. So, finally, this has been casted. You can see the casting has happened. This wall is also casted. This is also casted, and then we'll do the backfilling of this. And this area will be my approach area after that, okay. So, all the backfilling will happen. You can see a lot of soil has been put back. Similarly, now just now, whatever is, for, is, is on this side. Similarly, on this side also, we are supposed to do that. Here also that bracket will come. Here also that wall is going to come. Okay. Yeah. 
and finally this is also casted okay you can see how it has been casted yeah and this is the approach area okay you have put uh, you, have, you have done the proper compaction and after this we'll put a pcc in this area so we'll put a pcc here this is how that slab will look completely now yeah once that is done you can see they have put the PCC after the PCC we are tying the reinforcement for the uh, approach slab this is the continuation of the crash barrier here also your crash barrier is going to come hmm? and that it's a double mesh what we have provided the bottom and the top mesh And finally we are going to do the concreting of this so this is approach slab this length will be 3.5 meter from here to here so if you want uh, I'll quickly show you the drawing for this yeah so we already seen that in the drawing no need of showing it again uh, many times I've shown it even in a minor bridge also the previous bridge what we had uh, understood okay so it is usually a uh, it's a common uh, thing what we do the height is 300 mm and the width is 3.5 meter what we try to keep okay and you can see the concrete being poured there similarly on this side also we are supposed to do okay i showed it on one side on both the side your approach slab will come okay here also your approach slab is going to come this portion and finally you can see the approach slab here this is the approach slab okay and then this crash barrier we are supposed to do the casting of a crash barrier isn't it so we'll keep a pipe there for the supporting So you can see this part of the approach slab once it was casted we are supposed to do the curing of that so all this portion has been cle cleaned off and now we are going to keep the runner and once yeah so now we are doing for the expansion joint now wherever the approach slab is coming that this particular bridge slab and the approach slab there is a gap isn't it so that gap we are going to give that through the help of expansion joint so this is a channel what we have so this is your bridge okay this is your bridge part and this is the uh, approach slab in between this we are supposed to put this uh, expansion joint so that whenever there is a movement of your both both the slab what will happen this will allow that movement so because of that no cracks will appear so in this way we are supposed to keep it we'll insert this uh, expansion joint here and on the other side also both the side you are supposed to do that you can see this is one of the existing uh, bridge and here also they have done the expansion joint this is that expansion joint this was a place where the bridge was constructed this is approach slab and you can see this expansion joint which has been placed even whenever you uh, travel in any of the bridges you might usually see this kind of joint so it's called as expansion joint
so now you got an idea how all these things are done practically and now we are constructing we have put a kind of a starter see first layer this is called as a starter layer so that it is easy for us to keep the shuttering so this is a starter what we have put for the crash barrier and then we have arranged this uh, shuttering okay and then we'll do the concreting of this crash barrier so the shape will be something like this okay for the crash barrier so that is why you can see the same shuttering you can see it here how the shape has come this particular shape on this side all the crash barrier we have done and in this portion uh, all the all the things are left out i mean we are supposed to do the casting of all the crash barrier here and finally once that is done we'll do the concreting of that So now you got an idea how these crash barriers, crash barriers are constructed, uh, how this deck slab was constructed, and all. And finally, in this way, all the concreting will be done. So you can see it here. No, the cover block has been provided, and in this way, the concreting will be done. Okay, great. So once the concreting will be done, next day what we do? We'll try to do the deshuttering of that. You can see how the deshuttering is being done. So this is the deshuttering what we are trying to do. Okay. and then you can start with the curing of this so this expansion joint we have kept so we have to weld this expansion joint okay this expansion joint whatever you have kept you have to do the welding of the expansion joint in this way okay now you can see so that why why it has to be done so that it will be fixed there okay otherwise during the movement there is every chance it may vibrate I, i mean it may go here and there that is why we'll try to do the welding of that and we'll try to check the level of that and once that is done next we'll pour the concrete into that you can see the concrete has been poured so concrete on this side and concrete on this side has been poured this is my expansion joint and we'll be filling a thermocol into that okay later you can take that thermocol out so you can see the thermocol has been fixed into that and then you can take out the thermocol from there and inside that we are going to uh, fill in the flexible sealant okay this thermocol will be taken out later so both the side we have done the expansion joint so you can this is that angle what we had kept isn't it and then that filling has been done i mean concreting has been done there now you can see uh, that everything has been removed and then we are going to insert a uh, flexible uh, sealant uh, into this yeah so this is how this is what we this is what we call it as a flexible sealant and we'll try to insert that into this okay so what will happen whenever there is expansion and contraction so this will help in uh, expanding so that it will get compressed so when this both the slabs are expanding due to the increase in temperature this particular rubber what you have put no it will compress as a result of that it will absorb that much amount of uh, expansion so in this way we will try to insert it so this is how it looks practically yeah finally we have reached to the end portion and then we have cut it and we'll put it inside this this is finally how your bridge is going to look everything is done 
on this side and the same thing will be done on the other side also here also we have done that okay great so i hope you have got a complete idea regarding how this uh, bridge will be constructed and all now whenever you travel anywhere if you see any bridge and this is the crash barrier which is extended okay great so if you travel anywhere from today onwards you will get a complete idea like how this was constructed you might have been wondering all these years that how these bridges might have been constructed now you got an idea how the sequence of construction will happen and after that we have put a bitumen layer over that okay this is a road layer what we do right so that's how it looks finally now you don't even understand if you are seeing it for the very first time you don't even know how this was constructed isn't it because there is a rcc slab beneath this over that we have done the bitumen layer that is a wearing course yeah yeah so finally this is how that entire bridge is going to look okay so this was the starting portion what we had got it then we had constructed the crash barrier and on the other side also we had and all these things so i hope you have enjoyed my lecture up to here and you got a complete idea like how the bridge was constructed and all so we'll see you back in the next lecture thank you